Hi there. Thank you so much for joining my little podcast. I deeply appreciate your time. My time is valuable and I don't listen to that many podcasts, but the few that I do are near and dear to my heart. So if you're listening to my podcast, I assume the same is true for you and I appreciate you very much. Speaking of time, episode 263, we're going to talk about time. And you may not know it, but I'm obsessed with the concept of time. I mean it, obsessed. I covered a few episodes on time, but that doesn't mean I'm done and good with it. Time is on my mind every single day. The lack of time for everything I still want to do. The lost time that I wasted on everything I now would never do. And the time I'm losing every single day, not making progress on the things I've started. Time is my most valuable resource, more than money even. In my younger years, my decisions were driven by money. How much is it? This was the question that decided many things I did or didn't do. Today I can replace the word money with time. When is it? How long is it? This doesn't mean I have endless amounts of money. It just means that most of the things I value are affordable to me, but they all don't fit into the 24 hours of my day. I constantly worry how to make things work out time-wise. Between my responsibilities and my personal goals, there's often a trade-off. Things I have to do and things I want to do. Not doing what I have to do means slacking off. At work, when I don't get my stuff done or don't perform at my best. Or at home, when my place is messy because I'm out climbing every weekend instead of cleaning. Not doing what I want to do frustrates me. I feel I'm not getting closer to the person I want to be. And I feel stuck. I guess the time problem is a better problem to have than the money problem. But it still makes me just as anxious. There's so much I want to do. And there's so much I have to do. Where do I find a balance? I feel time constantly slips away. And I look after it like someone who missed the train or the bus. Always losing out. Always late. Always behind. And then, recently, I came across a quote that made me pause for a little bit. It's by Arnold Bennett. The chief beauty about time is that you cannot waste it in advance. The next year, the next day, the next hour are lying ready for you, as perfect, as unspoiled, as if you had never wasted or misapplied a single moment in all your life. You can turn over a new leaf every hour if you choose. If I choose... But I rarely choose. I'm good at stressing out over not having enough time. But I'm not so good at choosing deliberately what to do with my time. I love this quote because it changes my perspective from a retroactive one to a forward-looking one. Instead of lamenting the past, how old we already are, how many years we wasted on that job, that relationship, in that place, we have a different option. We can look forward to tomorrow, or even the next hour, and we can choose anew. What is past is past, but tomorrow is still fresh and not yet wasted. We can actually decide today over tomorrow, and how to make the most out of it. We can cultivate time. I think we're often caught up over-analyzing the past, why things didn't work out, why we didn't make the right decision earlier. Why didn't we see this coming? In favor of looking back, we miss the opportunities that lie in looking forward. We regret, we lament, we feel bad, we blame and we judge. But we often forget that tomorrow is a blank slate. Maybe looking back is easier than confronting the now. The past doesn't require any decisions. It's just like watching a movie, passive entertainment. It's comfortable. Looking forward and making a new call about tomorrow requires effort. Maybe too much effort. Or maybe we are just too sure about tomorrow. 
We know there will always be another day. Why rush things? We are comfortable with where things are now, even if they're not where we want them to be. We procrastinate. We wait it out. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe next week. Let's just see. Cultivating time requires a more deliberate approach to time. Placing more emphasis on our use of time, and maybe changing our perspective on time a little. Consider what Wayne Miller wrote about time and money, in his book Sabbath: Finding Rest, Renewal, and Delight in Our Busy Lives. The point is not that money is bad. Money allows us to participate in the national marketplace and to purchase all the basic goods and services we cannot provide for ourselves. But how much time should we trade for it? How do we decide when we have too much time and not enough money, and when do we know we have too much money and not enough time? In our culture, we so overvalue money that this question is rarely asked. People who have a lot of money and no time, we call rich, and people who have a great deal of time but no money, we call poor. What if we were to expand our definition of wealth to include those things that grow only in time, time to walk in the park, time to take a nap, time to play with children, to read a good book, to dance, to put our hands in the garden, to cook playful meals with friends, to paint, to sing, to meditate, to keep a journal? What if we were to live for even a few hours? Without spending money, cultivating time instead is our most precious resource. So maybe valuing time is not my stressful approach to never having enough. Maybe it's a combination of the two quotes I just shared: recognizing that tomorrow is not yet wasted, and filled with opportunity to do what we really want to do. Maybe to correct the mistake we made. To put effort into an area previously neglected, to work towards that goal we have been putting off for too long, or to simply hit pause and take a break, a rest, and then making a deliberate decision to make the time for it, not to favor money, or our routine, or what we have to do, but to recognize time as the most valuable resource and to treat it as such. I realize this is not always possible. I know I cannot just call into work three days in a row because I want to go climbing in Taos or visit my friend in Mexico City. Cultivating time doesn't mean slacking off. It means to carefully review our allocation of time, and to consider time a part of our wealth, not just money, which is necessary, but there is more to a fulfilling life. And a lot of those other things require time. According to Bennett, we can turn over a new leaf every moment of every day. And how we spent yesterday, last week, or all the years we've been alive, does not determine how we will spend the next hour. That depends only on what our next decision will be. So, let us turn over a new leaf and begin to create. The relationships, the adventures, and ultimately, the life that we want to have. Let's cultivate our time more deliberately. Much love, my friends. I talk to you soon.